Hello everyone and welcome to day 7 of our 30 day study challenge. Congratulations for making it a whole week if you have been with us the full time. If not, thanks for being here today anyway and we're so excited to jump into our review of enzymes. Let's get started. So enzymes are extremely important molecules in biology. They are going to be catalysts that help certain reactions occur. They can help break down certain molecules or put other ones together. They're important in photosynthesis, in cellular respiration, in digestion, in, in almost everything that's going on in the cell, enzymes are there and they are key. We'll talk about enzymes in medicine and health. Think about people who are lactose intolerant. It's because they don't have enough lactase enzyme to break down lactose, that milk sugar. In the environment and ecology, we'll continue to talk about enzymes. And remember that enzymes help reactions happen. Now, one key way to recognize an enzyme, even if you've never seen it before, is the letters ASE. Now, not every enzyme ends in the letters ASE, but many do. Even things like Rubisco, their full name is a word that ends in ASE as well. Let's take a closer look at a basic enzymatic reaction. So we have an enzyme, which remember are proteins. We'll get back to that in a minute. So we have this specific configuration of amino acids with one part called an active site where it's going to bind to a substrate or the molecule that is going to undergo the reaction. It's the reactants. This substrate will then attach to the enzyme and make what's called the enzyme substrate complex. The reaction will occur and then the products will be released. The enzyme is unchanged and can complete the reaction again and again. We call enzymes reusable because of this. And if you have enough enzyme, to complete the reaction, then it'll keep going and going until there is no more substrate to act on. Now, let's get back to this idea that enzymes are proteins. So remember our four main categories of biological macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids, enzymes are in the proteins category. And it's important to remember that because it's important to remember what enzymes are made of, and that is amino acids. So let's take a look at our protein structure once again. So because enzymes are made of a long chain of amino acids, they're joined together by peptide bonds, and they'll have a secondary structure too with connections between different amino acids through hydrogen bonds, and then of course a tertiary structure that gives it its three-dimensional shape. And the shape is very important because it determines the active site where the reaction is going to happen with the substrate. Now, just like any protein, if the conditions are unfavorable, let's say things get too hot, those bonds can start to come apart and this enzyme can lose its shape. So it unfolds or denatures, and then we may not have an active site that's the same shape as it should be to interact with the substrate. So denaturation is really going to affect the reaction rates because the structure of the protein is no longer there to be able to fit with the substrate and to, for it to attach and for the reaction to occur. Now, there are other ways that enzymes activity can be affected as well. It's not just temperature. This can be pH. This can be this can be the amount of enzyme there, the amount of substrate there, like we already mentioned. It could also be the presence of inhibitors. So inhibitors are other molecules that can either attach at that active site and block the substrate from binding, so that's called competitive inhibition, or they can attach at other points on the enzyme uh, at an allosteric site, it's what, is what it's called, and that might cause some configurational change in the enzyme as well and cause the active site to no longer be compatible with the substrate. Both of these will affect the enzyme's activity. So let's get back to important things to remember about enzymes. They are proteins. They are specific to the substrates that they act on. So amylase is not going to do the same thing as catalase or lactase or DNA polymerase. They do remain unchanged after reaction, so they're reusable. You can use them again and again. They work in a specific environment. So many enzymes have what's called an optimum pH or an optimum temperature where they function best. We'll see the rate of activity is going to be the highest there. And in general, enzymes work by lowering the activation energy of a reaction. Many times, biological reactions can occur without the presence of an enzyme. It just takes more energy to get there. So enzymes work by lowering that activation energy, making it easier to undergo go the reaction and having more reaction activity within the cell. All right, let's do some practice questions. What is the optimum pH for the action of this enzyme? We're not told what the enzyme is. We were just given pHs on one part of the graph and the rate of the enzyme activity on the other. Think about it. Correct answer is B8. So if we look at the top point of that reaction, the top of the curve of that graph, and we look down to the closest matching pH, it would be around 8. Now this is not very precise or perfect as far as graphs go, but we can see that 1 is where it's too acidic, there is very little enzyme activity, and anything past 11 or 12 really is not going to give us any enzyme activity either. So if the pH is too low or too high, this enzyme will probably denature, it will not function. 5, we see an increase in enzyme activity, but 
but it is not quite the optimum yet. Optimum is that highest point on the graph. What effect does temperature have on enzyme function? A, too hot, not enough molecular movement, and too cold, denaturation. B, too hot, denaturation, and too cold, reduced surface area. C, too hot, denaturation, too cold, not enough molecular movement, or D, too hot, competitive inhibition, too cold, non-competitive non inhibition. That's a lot to take in. I'll let you think about it for a second. And remember, if I'm going too fast, you can always pause or mute me or go through these questions at your own pace. Correct answer is C. Too hot, we could have denaturation, the enzyme could unfold, and too cold, usually we're not gonna have enough molecular movement. Remember, as temperature decreases, molecular movement is also going to slow down. And when we don't have as much molecular movement, we're gonna have fewer opportunities for these particles to collide and combine and have the reaction happen at all. So if the molecules aren't moving enough, we're not gonna have enough interaction between the enzyme and the substrate. Question three, enzymes found in the stomach for digestion have a lower optimum pH than other enzymes found in the body. Why is this? A, stomach enzymes are more sensitive to temperature fluctuations. B, stomach enzymes need to function in a highly acidic environment. C, stomach enzymes are more efficient at breaking down complex carbohydrates. Or D, stomach enzymes have no active sites. Think about it. B, stomach enzymes need to function in a highly acidic environment. Remember, we have stomach acids in our stomach. If something's very acidic, it's lower on the end of the pH scale. So they have a lower optimum pH, meaning they operate better in areas where the acidity is high. So the more acidic something is, the lower pH it is on the pH scale. The more basic something is, the higher pH it is on the pH scale. All right, that was a little bit of a short one today. Thanks so much for sticking with us through our 30 day study challenge. Tomorrow's video is going to be on photosynthesis, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out and stick around for another topic to review biology. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.